Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about tips and tricks to keep your makeup from looking heavy or cakey or maximizing the appearance of pores, fine lines, wrinkles, scars, any texture that you have in the skin. I'm going to talk to you about what causes our makeup to look that way. So if you're finding that your foundation is always looking heavy or cakey and you're not quite sure why, you are going to want to keep on watching. So first we're going to start with skin because it all starts there. You can buy the best foundation, the best makeup, the best brushes or tools, but if you're not taking care of your skin, then that is the first place that you want to start. So I want to start first with exfoliation. Exfoliating the skin is the first step in just creating a nice smooth canvas for your makeup. Exfoliating is basically going to help assist with removing the dead layer of skin cells that we all have on top of our skin. There are so many different ways you can exfoliate the skin and I'm not going to get into all of them but I do want to talk about a cleanser that I like to use that is a gentle daily exfoliator and that is the Murad Age Reform Exfoliating Cleanser, AHA BHA Exfoliating Cleanser. This has very fine little beads that help exfoliate the skin. It basically creates a physical exfoliation that's going to help remove that top layer of dead skin cells just so my skin is as smooth as it can be before I apply makeup. Any area of the skin that's not super smooth is just going to give more opportunity for your foundation to stick and get patchy or to just make it look a little heavier. Foundation will magnify any texture in the skin, so you want to do your best to eliminate as much of that as you can. I realize we all have different skin types and for some of us that's harder than for others, but if, but if you're not using exfoliator in your skincare routine, then I would encourage you to look into that. You can also get facials that'll help do that. You can get peels, you can use a microdermabrasion tool. There are so many different ways that you can exfoliate the skin, but one of the easiest ways I think is just using like a scrub. Using a scrub a couple of times a week will help improve the texture of your skin. The next thing you want to do is make sure your skin is very moisturized and hydrated before you go in to apply your foundation. You just want to make sure that you're using a moisturizer that is going to help moisturize and plump your skin. Fine lines, texture, wrinkles, pores, when they are dry and your skin is dehydrated, they just look more magnified. And when you put foundation on top of that, that magnifies them even more. So make sure your skin is nice and supple before applying your foundation. I like to apply my moisturizer and give that about 5 or 10 minutes if I can in the mornings before I go in and apply any other product. Currently, I'm using the IT Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream. I've just recently switched over to this the last two or so weeks. I really like it. It's very rich and very hydrating. It does not have an SPF in it. Uh, that is the one thing that I wish it did have. The SPF is a separate step that I have to go in and do after. Before I was using the Rapid Wrinkle Repair by Neutrogena and it had an SPF in it and I really did enjoy that. However, I just ran out of it and I had this one sitting here so I decided I would try and get through with some of my product before buying new product. The next thing that you can do to help the appearance texture in your skin is use a primer. I really like the Hourglass Veil Primer. It helps minimize the appearance of pores. It's very lightweight. It doesn't feel heavy or thick. It doesn't ball up on my skin. I like to apply it in the center of my face and I like to give again I like to apply this about 10 minutes after I've applied my moisturizer at least five minutes because I want to make sure that my moisturizer has time to seep into my skin and kind of start doing its work before I go in and apply the hourglass because I want these products to really work their, their way into my skin and not just be sitting on top of my skin built on upon layer upon layer so using a primer is going to do a couple of things that's going to help minimize the appearance of the texture it's also going to keep your foundation on longer and some primers will actually allow you to use less foundation. I find that is the case with the Veil Primer by Hourglass. I find that I actually use less foundation, which in turn makes my foundation look softer and more natural. The more product you put onto your skin, the heavier and more cakier it's going to look. So if I can apply a primer to cut the amount of foundation down, I'm going to do it. The next tip I have for you is choosing the right foundation. Now I talk about a lot of different foundations on my channel. I use a lot of different foundations. I change my foundation up pretty much daily, at least weekly for sure. Uh, my skin is pretty normal. I don't have a lot of texture. I don't have acne. I don't have a lot of scars. So I can kind of use all foundations. 
if you have a lot of acne or a lot of redness and scarring and your acne is not only red but it's very textured on your skin that's kind of tricky because I realize you want full coverage you want to cover that but you also want to look for the thinnest full coverage foundation that you can find because the thicker that that is yes it might cover all that redness but it's going to just magnify the scars or the texture and evenness so you want to find a foundation that is a thinner consistency a nice liquid that'll still give you full coverage I really like the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I like the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Pro Foundation. I think those foundations are thinner in consistency but still give fantastic coverage. You want to stay away from really thick, heavy creams. Even if they give you full, full coverage, those type of foundations aren't going to wear well throughout the day and they're going to look heavier and look cakier. The next tip when choosing the right foundation is choosing the right finish. You can, there are matte finish foundations, there are satin or natural finish foundations, there are dewy or glowy finish foundations. So I encourage you to kind of think about your skin type. Is it more oily or dry or combination? Do you have a lot of texture to your skin? And choose the right finish for your skin type. Also, application. So when I apply my foundation, depending on what type of foundation I'm working with, I either like to use a beauty blender or I like to use a small kabuki round foundation brush. I don't like to use the old school foundation brushes that I think we all learned on how do you do our makeup on that look like paint brushes. I remember when I started at MAC we used those. We used the 190 brush and that was like a paint brush. That brush is not really going to do a great job of blending the product into your skin. It's really just going to keep that foundation on the top layer of your skin where you want to work it into the skin. The reason I like a small kabuki foundation brush is because it almost mimics a sponge without absorbing as much product as a sponge. So some of my favorites are the It Cosmetic Dual Ended Foundation Brush. I also like the e.l.f. Um, I forget the name of it, but I'll have it linked down below. I also like that foundation brush because it's nice and small and dense, but it also has that curved edge. So it really helps blend the perimeter, the jawline of the face. It really gets around the nose. It gets in all those areas, but it doesn't absorb as much product as a sponge. However, I do use a beauty blender if I'm working with a foundation that is very heavy or very thick because that is going to help shear that product out. It's going to press it into the skin a little bit better. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll apply it with my foundation brush and then I'll go back in with my beauty blender to uh, work around the nose, work around the jawline, any area that the foundation may kind of settle in around the nose or between the brows or areas of my face that tends, that tends to happen a lot. I'll use a wet beauty blender to go in and just work it in and also absorb any excess product that might settle later. Also, you can mix foundations. If you love the coverage of your favorite foundation and you like the way it looks initially, but halfway through the day you look in the mirror and you feel like it's too heavy and too cakey, try mixing it with a more sheer foundation to just kind of dilute it down and thin it out a little bit, but still give you the same coverage that you need. Oftentimes, I find people use more foundation than they need or they go for a fuller coverage foundation than they really need where they can actually get a little less coverage but still get a very flawless finish and not have that heavy cakey finish that comes along with that foundation if that makes sense. Um, one foundation that I've always kept in my kit as a mixing medium is the MAC Face and Body Foundation. This is a very sheer foundation both in coverage and also in consistency. So it will sheer out a thicker, heavier, full coverage foundation. And usually what I'll do is I'll kind of play with, and I'll just kind of play with how much of each product I use. So if I find my full coverage liquid foundation is super intense full coverage, I might use a very small amount of that and a little bit more of the face and body. If I feel like my foundation gives me good coverage, but it's just a little too heavy, not super heavy, then I'll add a little bit less of the face and body. You can also do this with the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk or any foundation that's just more sheer and natural and thinner in consistency. This is a great tip. When I blend the foundation into my skin, I like to go in and press. They call it stippling. I like to go in and press and bounce that brush, similar to how I would be using a sponge rather than use brush strokes or move the brush across my face. I will only do that technique when I'm trying to blend out the jawline or blend or shear any area out. But when I'm trying to get maximum coverage with minimal product, you want to stipple the product on with a brush. And the last tips I have are when it comes to setting your makeup. I always go for a really fine, lightweight, translucent, loose powder. 
I do not like to set my foundation with a heavy or colored or a powder that has any additional coverage. I should be getting all the coverage that I need from my foundation. I shouldn't need to use the powder to get additional coverage. So I like to use, some of my favorites are the Danessa Myricks Loose Powder. I like the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Powder. I like um, the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. There are several that I have tested that I really like and I will leave those down for you below. But a good rule of thumb is you should be able to use your translucent loose powder in the roots of your hair. When you have really oily hair days and you don't have your dry shampoo around, you should be able to put that powder in the roots of your hair and it should absorb oil and disappear. If it leaves a white cast or it leaves any color in your hair, then you should be finding something that's thinner and more translucent. And again, I like to just press this into my skin with a brush very softly. I look for a brush that's big and full and soft, and I always dip it into the powder, and then I tap it off onto my hand, or I'll use the back of my hand, or I'll use a paper towel. I don't want to apply more powder than I need, and I really only want to apply it in the areas that I need. So for me, that's mainly the center of the face. So I'll just go in and lightly press that into my skin. I don't like to use sweeping motions because that can really move the foundation or move the concealer or any cream products that you've used. So you just want to softly tap it into the areas of the skin that you need it. And the last thing you can do to set your foundation is to use a setting spray. So this not only will keep your foundation in place longer, but it'll also make everything look more natural. So if you have a very dry, powdered, matte look, that can magnify texture, which can also make things look heavier. So using a setting powder will set that powder and make it look more natural quicker. It's basically doing what the job of your natural oils will do over time, but it's doing it instantly without producing oil that's going to break up your makeup, if that makes sense. So I highly encourage finding a good setting powder that will keep your makeup on all day, but will also make your makeup look more natural after application. All right, you guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you learned anything from this video, I would love for you to leave me a little note in the comment section below. What are some of your tips and tricks? If I skipped over a tip and trick that you find works really well for you, please share it in the comment section below. If you're not already subscribed to my channel and you enjoy my content, I hope that you'll subscribe and stick around and see all my future videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.